Western Wyoming and the surrounding areas are the perfect landscape for all types of adventurers. At Western, you will discover new interests, meet new people, and enhance the educational experiences you have at college. What's your passion? At Western, we believe students come first. Your success is our number one priority. Opportunities at Western give you leadership experience, job-related skills, and friendships that last a lifetime. Western provides opportunities for students during their college experience that can make them a more competitive job candidate, help them receive scholarships, and connect them with community leaders. Whether you're an avid outdoors enthusiast, a creative, an athlete, or something in between, Western offers activities on campus that are bound to capture your interest. Enter with passion, leave with purpose. Find your passion at Western Wyoming Community College. Hi Mustangs, my name is Dr. Kim Dale and I'm the president here at Western Wyoming Community College and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our Western family. Your decision to attend Western marks a new chapter of your lives. For those of you who have just finished high school, the previous chapters were written in large part by other people, your parents, guardians, families, and influential members in your community. Today, you are the author of the rest of your life. You determine the direction of your story. And this can be a daunting but exciting and challenging time. Most importantly, it is an empowering time for you. Some of you have chosen to enroll in Western after years in the workforce to further your careers or after having children. You've decided to acquire new knowledge, develop new skills, and enhance your personal attributes. Choosing to attend college as a non-traditional student is a difficult decision, and you've already demonstrated that you are up for this challenge, and I commend you for that. And all of you are laying the foundation for a better life and future successes in years to come. One of the greatest elements of your college experience is to try new things. I encourage you to get involved in campus activities as much as possible because these experiences outside of the classroom are an important part of your Western story. Our college's incredibly talented faculty are your guides and allies who will support you throughout your experience. They are your greatest resource here. The educators we have on our campus are thought leaders who have conducted research, have real world practice, and apply their expertise to their instruction. So get to know them. Tell them about your own ideas, because I promise you they will challenge, nurture, and guide you. Mustangs, you are the future. Your journey shapes you as the thinkers, citizens, leaders, and difference makers of our future. Make the most of this time here. Use it as a chance to cultivate new ideas, solve problems, grow in your creativity, and expand your mind and also use it to have lots of fun. Thank you for picking Western. I promise that this decision will positively impact you from this day forward. Hello, and welcome to Western. I am Dr. Dustin Conover, your Dean of Students. As the Western Wyoming Community College Rock Springs Campus, Green River Campus, and Outreach Centers are reopened to serve students, we are committed to ensuring a safe transition. We will be relying on each student to exercise common sense, good judgment, and to comply with guidance from federal, state, and local officials, as well as Western's protocols. Western has modified its operations to protect the health and well-being of our students, faculty, staff, and community visitors. We are continuing to monitor the situation and follow the advice of experts to limit and mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Students will be required to wear face coverings while inside all college buildings. Please see our COVID-19 video that is linked below for the guidelines Western will be following. What should you do if you or someone you know has tested positive for COVID-19? First of all, students should not come to campus. Those who live in the residence halls should remain in their room in the residence halls. Also, please notify me, the Dean of Students, by filling out the COVID-19 self-reporting form 
or you can call me directly at 307-382-1644. You can fill out the COVID-19 self-reporting form through your My Western portal or on the bottom of the college homepage under the consumer information link. In all cases, I, the Dean of Students, will work with the Wellbeing and Accessibility Center and any faculty members who teach your classes in which the student's physical absenteeism due to COVID-19 symptoms may impact your academic achievements and provide appropriate accommodations for any missed work. Western Wyoming Community College has reserved the right to share COVID-19 related information with the local health department and communicate any information to members of the campus that is in the best interest of the health and safety of our students, employees, and visitors to our campus. Plexiglass has been placed in multiple locations around campus to protect students and employees while conducting business. Please be respectful of these barriers and please continue to wear your face covering while interacting with college employees inside and outside of the classroom. Please remember to view the COVID-19 video link below. Thank you for your time and for abiding by these important safety protocols. Together, we can all keep our Mustang family safe. I hope you have a fantastic year as you pursue your academic goals. Hi, my name is Amy Galley, and I am the Director of Wellbeing and Accessibility and the Title IX Coordinator at Western Wyoming Community College. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about mental health and also some Title IX issues and what Wellbeing and Accessibility can do for you. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, first we're going to talk about Title IX. And it's important that all students understand Title IX and what their rights are and what this law actually addresses for those attending any college that's federally funded. So the gist of Title IX is no person in the United States shall on the basis of sex be excluded from participation in be denied benefit of or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity that receives federal financial assistance. So first and foremost, um, Title IX is a discrimination law. And so the discrimination that they're addressing through Title IX is sex and gender based discrimination. And there are a variety of ways that you as a student can report if you feel that um, you have been discriminated against, or if you have been a victim of what would be sexual misconduct or sexual harassment, which in turn might have a discriminatory effect. So if there has been sexual misconduct perpetrated by someone against you, it may inhibit your ability to feel um, safe on campus to access your courses. And that is the whole purpose of Title IX, that you are respected on campus and that any behavior um, is not does not have a discriminatory effect. So we encourage all students to report and reporting can be done a variety of ways. So um, first and foremost, um, reports can be filed online and can be done anonymously. And there's two ways to find our reporting form. Um, the first is you'll see down here um, that there is the report a concern form. You can click on that and um, mark Title IX under consumer information. And the other way is here on the student portal. You can click on report a concern. So from the general website or from the student portal and you can report anonymously or with identification. Please know though that if you choose to report anonymously, um, sometimes that does not quite provide enough for us to really um, pursue the full Title IX um, grievance process. So if you feel like you can identify yourself, the better. And know that anybody can report, whether you witnessed something, whether you were present, whether you heard something, um, we encourage everybody to report. You can also report directly to our Title IX coordination team. 
So again, you can see me. Um, I'm Amy Galley. I am the Title IX Coordinator and Director of Wellbeing and Accessibility. I'm located in room 2011 and my phone number is 382-1645. You can also email me through campus email. Um, but please know email isn't considered 100% confidential. So anything confidential shared, you know, we, we discourage you from sharing any personal information that way. Um, unless you feel comfortable. Uh, you can also report to Mark Rimbass. He is our um, Deputy Title IX Coordinator for Students and the Director of Planning and Improvement. And um, he's in room 3050D and his phone number is 382-1899 and he can be reached through campus email as well. And Joy Adams is our Deputy Title IX Coordinator for Employees. She is our Ass Associate Vice President of Human Resources in room 3034 and her phone number is 382-1832 and can also be reached via e campus email. So once you um, report something, that report is taken and um, basically myself or one of the Title IX coordination team members will discuss with you your report, your concerns, what you are wanting to happen, um, make sure that your safety is taken into account and then we put any remedies in place to make sure that you do feel safe um, but then we start analyzing the report so is does this um, and we we choose three different things dismissal informal resolution or formal resolution so dismissal would be that it is a concern and maybe we need to Maybe it doesn't rise to Title IX. Maybe it doesn't meet Title IX legal criteria. So we would refer that on to the Dean of Students um, or other office to be addressed. Um, the other option is an informal resolution. And as long as all parties agree that informal resolution can be pursued, um, we would identify and enforce any remedies or um, accommodations that we need to make. To, for informal resolution to proceed, we need to know that it does not pose a risk to the campus community. An informal resolution does not require a full investigation. However, this is not a this is not an option for a claim that involves an employee. If it involves an employee, it must move to formal resolution. And a formal resolution. Um, involves a full investigation. All parties review and respond to all evidence. It concludes with a live hearing with all parties and we use a preponderance of evidence standard that we feel that this claim of policy violation is more likely than not to have happened. Um, and so once that goes to the live hearing, a decision and responsibility of finding is reached. At that time, if someone is found responsible for our Title IX policy violation, um, certain sanctions can be given. So sanctions are warning, educational programming, counseling. It could be probation, suspension, or expulsion. It could be other organizational sanctions and any other actions deemed appropriate. So that all depends on the claim um, and, if, and the responsibility of finding it might also take into account other concerns or past kind of issues that the students might be uh, grappling with. So those are possible sanctions and repercussions. So one thing to know, um, all students in the first year success course are going to be asked to complete the required at Western Campus course. Um, when you require, um, when, excuse me, when you complete this course by September 11th, you will be put in a drawing for uh, up to $100 in prizes. So we will be giving out um, multiple $100 prizes and um, other smaller prizes. So we really encourage everyone to get that done by September 11th. Um, if you are living in housing, it will be something that we will keep reminding you of, we will keep doing. Know the good thing about doing, completing this assignment quickly is that you will already have an assignment in your first year success course completed. Um, it goes over prohibited misconduct. 
So sexual misconduct, harassment, and discrimination includes non-consensual sexual intercourse, non-consensual sexual contact, sexual exploitation, as well as discrimination, complicity, bullying, stalking, retaliation, and domestic violence. Any of those claims could potentially fall under the Title IX umbrella and would be prohibited on or the effects of those things happening off campus um, on campus. So even if something happens outside of our jurisdiction, we may need to take some remedies and take some action to make sure that um, that everyone is safe and respected on campus. Um, the policy that this applies to is policy 5420E um, and can be found on our website. In that other slide, um, you saw where um, you could report a concern right below that is Title IX and you can find the policies there. Um, an important aspect of Title IX is that of consent. Consent is equal approval of any sexual activity given freely and willingly through words and or actions. Consent can be revoked at any time and consent cannot be given if someone's incapacitated, under the age of consent, coerced or forced into sexual activity. Um, so it's very important that you understand consent and we go into consent much deeper in that online course. So that's what I have for you today regarding Title IX. Know that there are various booklets throughout campus. There are various um, posters, informational campaigns that all relate to Title IX, your safety and your rights on campus. In addition, I wanna encourage all students to, to practice safe sex and make sure that consent is given and that communication in sexual activity is the key to keeping everyone feeling safe and respected. And um, I appreciate your time. Hi, my name is Val Toomey. I work in the Center for Teaching and Learning and am frontline support for Canvas Hope. Um, just wanna welcome you to Western and thanks for joining me today. Uh, just for a few minutes for Canvas overview and hopefully some Canvas helpful tips for you. Um, we're going to start off at our homepage, Western homepage, and with your Western credentials, go ahead and, and click on My Western. Let's enter in your credentials and sign in. Once we get to our homepage, um, you'll see that you have access to your Western email. Uh, lots of helpful uh, resources here also, like the library. You do have access to Zoom. And here is the Canvas button. So once we get into Canvas, we'll just work our way down uh, the global navigation, starting at your account. Um, under settings, you have access to uh, put your put a profile picture in. Um, so you could either upload a picture or take a picture. Um, just uh, something appropriate doesn't necessarily have to be uh, your face. Just something that represents you. Um, also have access to your notifications here. Uh, we do recommend that. Um, you have your discussions and conversations on, um, but you can go through this and get back to it at any time um, to adjust whatever works best for you. Um, you have the option to notify right away, send daily summary, uh, send weekly summaries, and do not send anything. That is helpful to go in and you can adjust accordingly. So the dashboard um, is where your courses are going to live and you have access to change the name of, of your um, class or 
uh, change the color. You could also put a picture in there, just whatever makes sense to you. Um, there is a car view, a list view. And uh, to do the list over here, although although the to-do list is helpful, um, our suggestion is to always log into your class to access your um, assignments and syllabus and um, all the things. Depending upon how your instructor has the course set up, um, you should have access to your syllabus. Um, some, sometimes the instructors uh, do the courses by modules. Um, always pay attention to your um, announcements, assignments. Um, also, if you do have Zoom meetings set up, if your instructor has the Zoom meetings set up you, and it is available in the navigation, um, you would just go over and click on the Zoom and then um, join the meeting from there, if that's the instructions. Um, if you are registered for a course and you don't see it on your dashboard, you could always go to Courses and All Courses, and then you can star the course that you're not seeing, or perhaps you don't see it if the instructor does not have it published. If this is, says no over here, you would need to reach out to your instructor to ensure that um, they publish the course. I'm just going down the navigation, you do have access to calendar here also, um, with the, like your assignment due dates. You can add to this calendar also. Um, And then your Canvas inbox is also uh, very helpful, but please keep in mind that the Canvas inbox is different than your my Western email. So just be sure to check with your instructor, go over the syllabus, and be sure um, how the how your instructor prefers communication. Um, some use both. And this is also helpful if you need to um, email uh, like a classmate um, or someone in a specific class. You do also have access to Studio um, where you can record and upload videos um, to your courses. So yeah, that was just a real quick overview of uh, Canvas. Please feel free to contact me at um, v2me.westernwyoming.edu or at canvashelp at westernwyoming.edu. Also, we do have um, a Canvas student app, so go to your app store and add that. It's also a very helpful tool. Thanks. Hi, my name is Megan and I work at Western in the Financial Aid Office. On behalf of the entire financial aid staff, let me welcome you to Western Wyoming Community College and I hope to share with you some information today that will help you not only with your first semester, but maybe your entire time here at Western. I'm going to share with you some slides today, just going over some general financial aid information. But I want to remind you, if you ever have any questions, financial aid is located in Mustang Central, so you can always call or come in or email us with any questions you have. First, there are some important dates. Hopefully you're aware by now that the payment deadline is August 21st, and the first day of fall semester classes is August 24th. There's a date in here you may not know about, and that's okay. Financial aid census starts on August 27th. What that is, is after the semester starts and the add drop period ends, we go through and verify everyone's enrollment and make sure that you are eligible for the aid that you have. So <laughs> a lot of aid you might have to be full time, if it's federal aid, you have to be full time in classes that are listed on your degree program. So at this point, if there are any changes and you aren't maybe meeting all the requirements for your aid, we might have to make some adjustments. But if that happens, you will be notified by email. All right, so on this slide, I just wanted to remind you of the process on how to review and accept your aid. Um, you'll want to do this if you haven't done this already. Make sure to do this or even just log in and review everything to make sure that 
everything is up to date and that everything you have been offered and everything you need is accepted and ready to go. Uh, so you log into your My Western, you go to the self-service for students, and from there you really just need to follow the drop-down menus that say My Financial Aid, Review My Financial Aid. If you have any trouble with this though, contact Mustang Central. And then once you get into self-service, this is the page that will open. This is the home page. I just wanted to point out a few things. As you can see, it's not the clearest picture, but just general direction. Um, when you scroll down, there's your checklist. That's how you follow the steps to know what step is needed next. If you need to review and accept, if you're taking out a loan, if you have you know, entrance counseling or master promissory notes, master promissory notes, uh, those are required for a loan. So if you don't have those steps complete, your loan won't be applied towards your balance. And those things do take a few days to be processed by the Department of Education. So you don't want to wait for the payment deadline to do that if you need the loan. Um, and there are some other great resources on here too. You can see above the checklist, there's this green bar. That's your satisfactory academic progress status. That's updated every semester and that's for federal aid. You can click on the link to get more details about that. Um, you can click to go to your account summary from this page. And down at the bottom, there's some other links for some useful pages um, that you might need, uh, like the links to get to the entrance counseling and master promissory note are listed there, information about Hathaway. Uh, so if you haven't already, take some time to get into self-service and check some things out. And finally, just some tips and or some advice from financial aid. Uh, you're going to hear this many times. Make sure to check your Western email regularly. This is our main form of contact for many offices on campus. Uh, I put the app on my phone and turn off the notifications. So I'm not getting the beeps all the time whenever I get an email, but I have easy access to it. For when I have a minute, I can go and check and make sure I'm up to date on everything I need to be. Um, I've already mentioned maybe get into your My Western, check out the resources that you have in your My Western as well as self-service. Um, during the semester, if you the situation arises where you need to make drop a class or make schedule changes, check with us before you do that to make sure you know what the requirements to maintain eligibility for your aid are, because different types of aid have different requirements. And then this one is a little ways off, but remember to apply early for scholarships for next year and the FAFSA has to be done annually and that opens every October. That's everything I have for you today, but if you have any questions, please feel free to stop into Mustang Central call or email us anytime. Thanks. So the goal of well-being and accessibility is to support and empower students as they strive for personal, academic, and social success. We offer a variety of services in our office. We're in room 2011 in the Rock Springs campus, but all of, almost all of our services can also be accessed through Zoom, um, FaceTime if students prefer. We have some students that have preferred FaceTime via Zoom or other than Zoom during COVID. So just let us know what way we can um, provide services and we can do that for all students, whether you're on campus or off. So um, you see here uh, that we provide counseling services, accessibility services, relaxation, prevention, crisis and emergency services, as well as Title IX services. So let me introduce our staff really quickly. Um, Lindsay Love, she is our accessibility specialist. And so she, our accessibility program, helps students who have an IEP or 504 coming into college or they have another diagnosed disability in which they need accommodation. So basically this process, you do have to apply, you do have to provide um, documentation of the disability for which you're seeking accommodation, but then we can provide reasonable accommodation in the classroom to make sure that all students can do well while they're here at Western. Um, Haley Rawlings is our new counselor. We're excited to have Haley here. Um, Brett Zerger is a longtime counselor in our office, and he will still be counseling and seeing students, as well as myself, um, the director I see some students for counseling, although my avail appointment availability is a bit limited. Again, we can all see students, whether it's for accessibility services or counseling services via Zoom or other format upon student request. 
So you'll see one benefit of being on campus is that we have the relaxation room. This is a picture of our relaxation room and we have rearranged it to accommodate for social distancing. So two people can check out the relaxation room at a time um, and they have six feet distance between the two massage chairs and you can use the relaxation room for up to a half hour. So, um, Let's see. Then we also have accommodations. So our accommodation program, we serve sometimes up to 190 in a 12 month students in a 12 month span of time. Um, you can see the kinds of disabilities that we um, provide accommodation for. Um, some are emotional, mental health or psychological, uh, learning disabilities, ADHDs, ADHD is one of our larger areas for which we accommodate students, orthopedic impairments, and then others. Um, so that other encompasses all kinds of disabilities. Sometimes it might be diabetes or a health concern. Sometimes it might be other things. So um, that kind of gives you a brief rundown on what we can help accommodate. We provide events and of course our events are going to look a little bit different this year with COVID, um, but we hope to still have some. We One of our most popular events is open mic night and we would like to still proceed with that on the first Tuesday of every month. However, um, you know, maybe it might be via Zoom or it might be in a different location to provide for social distancing and safety. But we encourage all students to come and share their talents, win prizes and a free t-shirt and participate in open mic night. It's really, really a great event. Um, we do a lot of prevention activities in our office. So you'll see signs um, informational campaigns. We'll have tables down at the pendulum to help um, students understand their rights, understand Title IX and, and sexual misconduct, harassment and discrimination, um, but also to help them um, with drug and alcohol awareness, uh, making sure that they're taking care of themselves, um, suicide prevention. We want to make sure that all students are safe on campus campus taken care of and that we can help them in any way and that they know how to seek help on campus. So this is just some kind of statistics that I thought um, would be beneficial. So we do offer crisis appointments. So you can see we vary throughout the year. A crisis is basically um, classified as somebody who walks in either during business hours or after hours and contacts us for immediate assistance or help. Um, after hours, the best way to do that is to contact security and they will get a hold of one of us and we will respond um, in any way that you would like us to, whether it's via phone, we can come over to campus. Typically, if we need to come to campus, um, it takes about 30 minutes to 45 minutes max for us to to respond on campus. Um, you can also during business hours come in and let us know that you need to be seen as soon as possible and we will make all arrangements to be able to do so for counseling. Um, so our counseling services, most often we see students um, seeking appointments for um, anxiety and stress, that's our number one. Um, diagnosis that we see students for, second depression, and then ADHD is third with more severe and persistent diagnoses um, rounding out the other that we have. So know that it's important as a student that you um, have some balance in your life, that you make time for fun, you make time to get to know other students to be involved on campus, and we realize that the this year, it's going to be a little bit different, and um, and it's and sometimes being involved and, and making connections with people, it, it might be more of a challenge this year. But we want to make you help you do that, and that those things make you healthy and happier on campus. Um, we know that we know that being connected is keeps us all healthy. 
we're social beings and connection to other human beings is important. So um, we want to just let you know a couple other things. Um, you can see that average sessions for students, they usually get about five sessions, although we can offer um, several more sessions than that. But typically due to COVID um, and some other restrictions we have in our office, um, sessions might look a little bit different this year, uh, but we're, we're going to roll with it and, and we're still here to help students. Um, you can see that 43% of our counseling students, our counseling students that come in, um, our 43% of those have stress or anxiety related diagnoses. So taking care of yourself, organization, um, all of those kinds of things can really help that and um, work to prevent that, that you're not struggling with those issues. So, um, and again, the mood disorder diagnosis, that's depression. 32% of people um, who come in qualify with depression or another mood disorder of some kind. So um, all counseling services are free of charge for any student enrolled in even one credit hour. So um, this is a great benefit that we're able to offer our students and we really hope that you take, out, take advantage of that and reach out if you need to. So that's kind of a little bit about our office. Um, one thing I do want to share is um, some things for you to be aware of and look out for. Um, make sure you are making connection with other students. Make sure that you are sleeping well, eating well, getting exercise, getting some sunshine. All of those things um, work into our mental health and help us with our mental health. We know that things look a little di bit different with COVID and that that in itself can present some anxiety. So please be aware of how you're feeling. Um, know that we are here to help you um, and know that you can also report if you feel concerned about a friend. And again, you can use the online reporting form to report any concerns, whether you want to do that anonymously or or name yourself if you have concerns about other students, their personal safety, their mental health and wellness, and we can reach out to them and offer services and make sure that they know that they're supported. Um, all right, so again, all counseling services are confidential and free. Um, the only time that we do have to break confidentiality is if we feel that somebody is a danger to themselves or others. Um, but please take advantage of this service. We're here to help you. Um, you can reach us and we are located on the Rock Springs campus in room 2011. You can call our office at 382-1652 or you can come email us at wellaccess at westernwyoming.edu and request an appointment or just come on in and talk to us. Um, let us know how we can help you or what you're needing. Um, we have students that range from, hey, I need some support with um, organization and academic kinds of organization skills to more direct mental health concerns. So please get a hold of us. And again, after hours, contact Campus Protective Services and they can reach a counselor on your behalf. And that's all I have for you today. So thank you. Hello, my name's Alex Nelson. I'm the Student Life and Housing Coordinator at Western Wyoming Community College. Today, I'm gonna to show share with you information about the student life here at Western, as well as some other resources you should know about. So the most important thing you can do as a student at Western Wyoming Community College is one, Always check your Western email because that's where a lot of important and valuable information gets sent, as well as follow us on social media accounts. You can find us on Instagram at Western Wyoming Community College, on Facebook at Western Housing and Student Life, on Snapchat 
at Western events, or you can just search Western Wyoming Community College on all these platforms. It's really essential that you follow these um, social media platforms so that you can know when the events are going on and get that really important information that we send out via social media. Student Life would like to invite all students, whether you live on campus or off campus, to join us for Welcome Week. This year, for Western Adventures, we're going to be holding a ton of different events throughout the first week of classes. You can find more information about Welcome Week at westernwyoming.edu. Just a side note, all of these events are free for students. And also remember to view the website so you can view all of the social distance guidelines that we'll have in place for each event. First year success. Students who are new to Western, we encourage you to enroll in first year success. It has a ton of different benefits for students. During the first year success class, students will be encouraged to participate in events and activities on the Western campus. This is an easy way to complete assignments for this class. The first year success class will also cover the Peer Tutor Center. We'll talk about that on another slide further in this presentation. All first year success, success students also complete an assignment about a campus resource. This is very important so you know about all the resources that Western has to offer. Do you want to get involved in student life and start your own club here at Western? It's easy. All you have to do is head to Mustang Central and pick up a club chartering packet. For a club, you do need to have an advisor. This person needs to be a staff or a faculty member here at Western. Also, please note the yellow piece of paper that is attached to the club chartering packets. This has all the social distancing, distancing guidelines that clubs need to know for the 2020-2021 school year. Don't want to start your own club? That's okay too. We have a whole bunch of already existing clubs in place. During the first few weeks of school, we'll be holding Mustang Market, so please make sure you see the advertising for that so you can see all of the cool clubs that we have here at Western. This year, Mustang Intramurals will be holding virtual events. Make sure you see all the marketing to understand the social distancing guidelines that we will have in place. The game room, which is located by the atrium, is going to be open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday on the Rock Springs campus. The game room is free for all students, so make sure you go and check that out, as well as make sure you understand the social distancing guidelines in place to enter the game room. Western SGA will be holding elections during the fall semester. In order for a student to participate, they need to have a petition filled out. These petitions are due August 28th at 5 p.m. in Mustang Central. Elections will be held September 1st through 3rd. SGA is made up of three different components. Officers, which includes the president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Senators advocate for students and campus activities board. The campus activity board, board oversees all of the events that SGA holds throughout the semester. For each of these positions, the students will receive a scholarship for each semester. C, the amount of scholarships on the slide below. The Peer Tutor Center is located on the second floor. They can help you with a variety of different subjects and dual and concurrent enrollment students are welcome. You should also know that the Peer Tutor Center is free for all students. This semester, the Peer Tutor Center will be able to see students via Zoom. Please call 307-382-1707 or stop in the their room on the second floor to schedule an appointment. Are you looking for a job? Please consider to be a tutor for the Peer Tutor Center.